Hello again everybody. With all this lockdown nonsense I'm really missing the opportunity to uh, to travel. Um, so I was looking through some old videos that I'd done some time ago and I came across one which uh, might be of interest to some people. When I took off for a few days in Gwendolyn, the motorhome, and went to the Island Man with my sister. So, uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. Now, for those that don't know, the Island Man is an island between Northern Ireland and uh, UK mainland. It's a self-governing British Crown dependency with its own currency, the uh, Manx Pound and Sterling. They also have their own flag. The symbol on it is called it a Skillion and it originates from Viking times. We sailed from a place called Haitian and it was stupid really because uh, I thought I'd booked for two o'clock in the afternoon and it wasn't it for two o'clock in the morning. Anyway, there were only five of us in five other vehicles in front of us. And eventually we got on the uh, on the ferry. <laughs> I'd also booked seats, which is a good job you can see. It was packed, absolutely packed. Oh, there's one person anyway, my sister Susan. And we had a little snack here. And then uh, that's the boat that we travelled on. The Ben Cherie. Uh, very comfortable. And we arrived in Douglas at a ridiculous hour of the morning trying to find a cafe so eventually we found this one which was the only one that was open and we'd managed to park fairly close so uh, without hitting on double yellow lines and uh, we had a very very good breakfast there but the campsite that I booked us on was uh, totally unsuitable for uh, motorhomes we drove round and round everywhere you could think of until we eventually found this one. Uh, the only one that was open because it was out of season. Wonderful views across the Irish Sea. And in the distance there, you can see the mountains of Morn in Northern Ireland. And round this way, you could see Dumfries and Galloway. And round the corner you could also see England, but not from this site. Well, the facilities at this site were fantastic. It might look like a bit of a shambles down there, but there was a fully fitted kitchen, showers, toilets, everything, and immaculately clean. So it was, uh, that was a good find. And then we drove over the hills, riding up to about a thousand feet above sea level. This is not part of the uh, TT course, by the way, but uh, there was still, we still passed some motorbikes. The views from up here were very, really, really good. And then we dropped down to Laxey, where they have the Laxey Wheel, very famous and very, very impressive. To get there, you drive up this little narrow lane and over the cattle, cattle grid into the car park and there is the Laxey wheel itself it's a water wheel and it drives a crank and there's the counterbalance to the crank it doesn't take very much water to drive it that's the amount of water coming off the wheel and back into the stream. And if the water sounds too much for you, or the sound of the water sounds too much for you, there's the toilets. To show you how big it is, there's Susan standing up there. And there's the wheel, 72 feet and 6 inches in diameter. But now I'm going to climb up that spiral staircase that you can see, and go up the top and have a look. And there's the crank driving the beam, which is very, very long. In fact, it's so long you probably won't believe how long it is. But there it is, pushing backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, 
on that link arm there, down that long, long channel there on the British Affair, lifting water out of what used to be the mines, where they mined zinc ore and lead. And looking over the top, the water wheel itself going round and round. The proper name for the wheel is actually Lady Isabella, and it was named after the wife of the governor in 1850-something, who officially opened it, and it was named after her. But now down to the waterfront at Laxey. Some nice little shops here, and a very, very uh, safe harbour here. It's part natural and partly enclosed by a breakwater and there's the entrance to it there very safe haven next it was off to ramsey on the south uh, in the north east side of the island um well, last time i've been here i thought this was quite a pretty little town but it's out of season now and uh, not so not, not so much going on and we drove along the sea frontier and <laughs> Intending to turn left and get back into the village, and when we turned, there was a car blocking the road <laughs> and we couldn't get through. So we had to reverse out and find ourselves another way to get round. From there, we drove on to a place called Jerby, on the northwest corner of the of the island, and I promised my sister Susan that she would see something she would really enjoy. Jerby junk and it's run by a lady called Stella and I spoke to her while I was there and I said um, it's not the same as it used to be and she said no we had to move out of the old army buildings and uh, into this new unit and it's not the same she used to get two or three deliveries a week of containerfuls of stuff that she'd bought in various places on the mainland and uh, now it's all laid out like this, all a little bit modern. But the next morning we had a good breakfast with some nice views out through the back window of the van. And then we took a drive along the west coast of the island. Looking at the views. And we had a coffee in that place there. And then we went on down the coastline to uh, towards Port Erin. And this is Port Erin. Quite a busy little place. Plenty of shops here for those who like shopping. And uh, the parking arrangements here are quite interesting as well. So uh, I... <laughs> And there's a steam train here, which runs across the island to uh, Douglas. I have done the ride some years ago, but a nice little, uh, nice little outfit. There's more or less to the route. Well, unfortunately, I lost the soundtrack for this bit, so I have to do it by hat, by mouth. And so on, but you get the idea anyway. Nice little train. Well, while we were down this end of the island, we went to what is their equivalent of Land's End and looked across at the Calf of Man. That's that island in the far distance there. And there's a very nice restaurant here where we had an al fresco lunch. And. Uh, with our view across to the uh, Calf of Man. And Susan had something with crabs and I had uh, chili con carne. And then to a little village which is virtually a museum in its own now. Although do people do live there and we had a, a nice lunch there. And the uh, old buildings. And the uh, interesting thing is that the thatch is tied down to the beams which is <laughs> obviously to stop the wind from blowing them off there they are all tied down 
And then off to Castle Town, which, as its name implies, has a castle. And we were lucky enough to find somewhere very good to park. Uh, good job it wasn't high season. And we took a little wander around the, uh, the streets and into the centre, around the castle, and down to the little harbour. Very pretty little harbour. Some interesting um, buildings there. The main building. And the centre was being ripped up and relayed. Should be nice when it's finished. And then off to Douglas, the uh, capital. Plenty of shops, just like a big town ought to be. Something of interest for everybody there. There's a TT shop. And now we take a walk along the front. There's the uh, ferry terminal. And out there in that little spot is that little castle there, built on a rock. And the gardens along the Esplanade, very, very pretty. Plenty of interest there. Trees, palms, flowers, you name it, all there. And we managed to find a really good parking place. We also found this uh, shopping mall just outside Douglas. Not very big, but very, very interesting. And like the whole of the, the uh, place, it's well, well worth a visit. Now this place is the old Parliament Gardens. And the Viking King used to sit on top of that mound there and proclaim all the new rules and regulations to the people who would be crowded along that lane. And that was the way life was. This is now a Peel. Where amongst other things there's an interesting smokery. There's the uh, smoking box. An interesting museum based on Viking times. A large harbour. And of course another castle. But then it was time to go back. So off back to uh, the Douglas Port and get on the ferry. Since this ferry only loads from the rear and the stern, you drive on the stern, you drive all the way to the bow, you can turn around and head back towards the stern. <laughs> 